boy, time really flies, doesn't it? I mean, can you believe this is the week four preview episode already? Week four! Crazy. Absolutely nuts. Hello, YouTube, and welcome into the newest episode of Entertainment Purposes Only. I am your host, Ben Hardy, as always. The hair is fine. Nothing special, nothing right home about. Not bad. It's a B, a solid B, but anyway... You know, time's flying. We're already at the week four preview episode. Good news is we got 14 games to get to here on this episode. So it's a good slate. It's a good slate, 14 games, but that's how they get you. That's how they get you. You spend all off season, all summer long waiting for the season to get here. Then, you know, once it gets here, you're all cocky. You're like, oh man, we got three plus months of this. It's never going to end. And then just like that, you're already halfway through it. And that's where we'll be in a couple weeks. Cherish it, savor it, enjoy it. It's going to be gone before you know it. But again, good news, 14 games to get through this episode. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into them. By the way, guys, let me know in the comments. Let me know in the comments. Do you like the way we do these preview episodes? For instance, what I'm talking about is how we do them chronologically, like we're going to start with a Friday night game, work our way down through the noon slate, the midday slate, the night slate of Saturday. Or would you just like me to go ahead, jump right into Tennessee, Oklahoma and USC, Michigan on this episode? We're going to keep it chronological this time because I've already made the bottom line banners, but let me know in the comments if you think it would be better off for the show and for your viewing experience if we just started with the big games and went in order like that. Without further ado... Friday night, pretty good one. Illinois at Nebraska. This 8 o'clock Friday night is going to be on Fox. You see there, Nebraska favored by 7.5 over Illinois. Top 25 matchup now. Illinois entered the polls this week after their big win over Kansas. This one's going to be the biggest test yet for Nebraska. Illinois, at the very least, to beat them, you're going to have to earn it. They're not going to beat themselves. They are not going to hand it to you. Rayola is going to need to be better against this Illinois defense than Jalen Daniels was. I think he can. I think he should. But, again, it's just not going to be one of these easy games. Do not be tricked into seeing what Nebraska did in their last big-time game against Colorado and thinking that everything's going to be this easy for them. Illinois, that defense is going to put up a much tougher test for them. With that being said, I still like them at home. I think the Huskers get it done. I kind of agree with the spread in total here. I got Nebraska winning this one 24-17 over Illinois. Could go anyway, though. All right, on to Saturday. Florida at Mississippi State, noon on ESPN. (laughs) Gonna level with you guys. I was gagging there as a bit for how ugly this game was. By the middle of the second one, it became a real situation there. I will not do that again for a game. You have my word. If you saw that, just know that, you know, the little devil on my shoulder won the battle against the angel. That was saying either leave that in or cut it out. If you saw that, I left it in. But anyway, this is a puke-worthy game, having to watch these two teams face off. It's honestly, I mean, these two teams could not be in a worse headspace right now. It's one of these spots that might actually be better for Florida that they're on the road than if this game was in the swamp. Because, I mean, Florida is in one of those spots right now. They've had two big home games already. Did not go well. The swamp could get toxic on them very quickly. Sort of already has. The Boo Birds were out last week. So they're going to have to go and face the Cowbells. I think that's better for their mentality than playing this one at home. The enjoyment of watching this one is going to be strong with me, and I know a lot of people, like one of those uh, car crashes you just can't look away from. Florida, I don't think they're as bad as Mississippi State. Their roster is still just better. So two teams who aren't very good give me the better roster. 31-20 31-20 Florida is my prediction. I'm not giving it out as an official play. Anything could happen. If Mississippi State won this game by double digits, it wouldn't be shocking because Florida could sort of be in that Florida State spot where they just can't beat anybody. So you never know, but end of the day, if I've got to pick a score, I don't know, 31-20 Florida. 
Woof. Also, at noon, Kansas at West Virginia. This one will be a much more palatable watch. Should be, at least. Everybody knows how disappointing Kansas has been so far. They're 1-2, and two, lose to UNLV last Friday, and lost to Illinois, like we mentioned, in Week 2. I'm not quite sure everybody is as hip to how bad West Virginia has been so far. Remember Week 1 when everybody was just – totally convinced that Penn State had fixed the offense. I haven't look, really looked that great since. That week one was against West Virginia. This West Virginia defense is putrid. Absolutely horrible. Kansas, they, big downgraded offensive coordinator. They lose uh, Andy Kotelnicki to Penn State. Now they bring in Jeff Grimes. Not a bad offensive coordinator. Kotelnicki's just very good. We're sort of learning with Jalen Daniels. He's awesome. Like, we all thought he was awesome coming into the season. He's awesome when they got the plays schemed up for him. And it's just sort of a run, one read, make the play. But when he's got to actually read a defense, it has not been pretty. I think Jeff Grimes, hopefully, starting to realize that, along with Lance Leipold. And they're just going to start scheming up those big plays for him. Let him do what he does best. It will certainly be there for him against this West Virginia defense. Now, Jeff Grimes, where did he come from? Past few years, he was the offensive coordinator at Baylor. Baylor had great success against this West Virginia defense. You see there, West Virginia is favored by two. I think the wrong team is favored. Give me the Jayhawks. They get it done outright. I got 38-28 Kansas. How about that? Upset already. Second game of Saturday. Not going to be an upset in this next one. NC State at Clemson. That is noon game, ABC. A lot of eyes will be on it. CJ Bailey in for Grayson McCall for the Wolfpack. We sure that's a huge downgrade? I mean, it certainly is in terms of experience, but as far as talent, McCall has not been good this year. Now, it's still... CJ Bailey making your first big start in that environment against that defense. I don't love it for him. So, I mean, I think this is going to be another confidence booster game for Clemson. Question is, are they trying to light up the scoreboard? Or are they just trying to control the clock, cruise to the win? I sort of in the middle, I got Clemson winning this one 38 to 13. 330 slate. Now, how about this one on paper? USC goes to the big house to face Michigan. See there, USC favored by five and a half. Now, who in the world, as USC is this unranked, everybody giving up on Lincoln Riley and that team in the preseason, Michigan defending national champions, even though they lost everybody, people just disregarded it for some reason. Who in the world would have told you going into week four that the perception of these programs would be so different that USC would be going into Michigan as almost a touchdown favorite. This guy did. You remember. I told you Michigan was going to be terrible. I told you USC was going to be very good. Here we are. Only took three weeks of games to do it. USC minus five and a half at Michigan. Look, this one could go either way. The better brain in me is telling me this is a Michigan spot. Whenever you got those teams who've completely done a 180 on their expectations and they're playing each other, a lot of the time the team everybody's super high on doesn't show up. The team everybody's written off, they're in that survival mode and get it done. Like everybody's super low on Michigan now. Have they gotten too low? Does that defense, who's got a lot of good players still, do they have sort of a final stand in them to save their season? Because, guys, if they win this game, Michigan's still got everything in front of them. You can write off the Texas loss that, okay, that's just a great team we played. We didn't have our best game. They got us. We've switched quarterbacks now going to Alex Orgy. We're a different team now. But if USC puts it on them, then it's going to be a long season in Ann Arbor. Like I said, my gut says it's a Michigan spot, but that offense is just so bad. I can't do it. I can't do it. USC's improved defense, too good for that horrible Michigan offense. The score I'm giving out is 20-10 to 10 USC. You'll see it later in the pick segment. 
but 20 to 10 USC is my official score prediction. Would not be totally shocked if Michigan just somehow pulls out a horseshoe and gets it done. Arkansas at Auburn, 3.30 on ESPN. You see there, Auburn, minus three. Pretty high over under there at 56. Side note, you'll see a lot of these totals starting to look like NFL totals. Like If you look down the board of an NFL week that's got all the spreads and totals, every single game is going to be like a 44 or 45 point total. There might be like one up to 49 or 51 if it's like Chiefs Bengals or something like that. But for the most part, every single game is just cookie cutter, boring. That's why college football is so much better. You'll see the a lot of the totals this week are sort of similar to that. A lot in that mid-40 range. I credit that a lot to the new clock rules, a lot of it to the new headset rules. Don't try to make college football the NFL. Because if you make college football the NFL, then the NFL actually will be better than college football. If it's the exact same thing and the players are just better. But what? keep college football fun, exciting, unique. Stop trying to mold it into the NFL game. It's annoying. But you see, we got a good one here with a 56-point total. That's what we'd like to see. You guys know the Hugh Freeze roller coaster. The big games he's going to be up for, the down games, they're going to play down to their level of competition. I think Hugh treats this one as a big game. It's a home game after the disaster to Cal two weeks ago. I think he knows he's got to win this one. Now, Arkansas has shown more this season that they should be a better team. Petrino knows he's still sort of auditioning for that job, whether it's interim or just full-time once they give it to him. I think he's going to be able to put up points in this one. Problem is they just still don't know how to win. Arkansas, like they had Oklahoma State dead to rights. Let it slip through their fingers. I think Hugh schemes it up just enough. And difference in this game is that it's being played in Jordan-Hare Stadium. And as all of my Georgia and Alabama fans know out there, that place is downright haunted. For big game opponents, Auburn gets it done 34-28 is my official prediction. Next one. Very interesting here. Georgia Tech at Louisville, 330 on ESPN2. I mean, literally anything could happen in this game. Anything. I would not be surprised if Louisville wins this game by 20 plus. You see they're favored by 10 and a half there. Louisville could easily win this thing by 20 plus. Most people think they're that caliber of team. Georgia Tech could also win this thing outright. Like either scenario equally likely to me. One of those rare games. Tech probably still getting some undeserved credit for that Florida State win, which we now know just if anything it's embarrassing that I had to take a walk-off field goal to get it done against that team. Louisville hasn't really been tested yet. So here's sort of the sneaky part about this. Louisville is at Notre Dame next week. Could be a tricky trap game for them here. They're looking ahead to South Bend. Again, I have no idea what's going to happen in this game, but I've got to pick a score and an outcome. 34-27 Louisville. Tech might go up early. Louisville wakes up, is able to come back, finish it. 34-27. Another one. Now, you might be gagging when this one comes up, but it's a very interesting game. Rutgers at Virginia Tech, 330 ACC Network. It's time for the Hokies to put up or shut up, period. Similar to that Illinois and Nebraska game we talked about, Rutgers is a team that if you're going to beat them, you're going to have to earn it. They're not going to hand it to you. They're going to line up. They're going to run the football. They're going to block you. They're going to tackle well. Now, Virginia Tech, if you're close to the team that you were supposed to be in the preseason, you'll be able to do that no problem. If not, if you're a fraud, Rutgers is going to beat you here. Observation game. We've had a few of those every single year or every single week so far this year. Observation game, no play on it, but going to be very interested to see how this one plays out for the rest of the season as we grade grade these two teams. Prediction, I don't know, 24-21 Hokies. But who knows? Next up, now this is, on the contrary to Rutgers-Virginia Tech, this is one that looks great on paper. 
You see the logos, the colors, everything. UCLA at LSU 330 ABC. It looks a lot better to the casual fan than the folks who really know ball because LSU's not good. We established that after their game last week. But UCLA is horrendous. I mean, you see here, LSU is favored by 24 in this one. After last week, I just can't take them to beat any Power 5 program by 24. Can't trust them. So I'm going to say 45-24 LSU because UCLA is just hapless right now. I mean, that'll be one. I'll turn it on, add it to the multi-view if warranted as it gets into the second quarter and later. But I expect this one to just be a LSU just sort of has a safe lead throughout most of the game. UCLA doesn't have the firepower to catch them. All right, guys, I want to take a minute and remind you about the Music City Wheels Golf Classic being held Friday, October 25th in Nashville, Tennessee. You remember Robbie from our other episodes, his foundation, Music City Wheels, doing a lot of big things with the handicapped community in Tennessee and beyond. They're putting on a charity golf tournament for the foundation here, October 25th, right there in Nashville. As you can see, uh, Vanderbilt football is going to be a part of it. That's always means it's going to be a lot of fun. If you want to join, scan that QR code right there. You can get in as an individual. You can get in as an entire team. Even if you can't make it out to Nashville for this tournament, you can donate right there. Like I said, it's a great cause. Uh, nobody can be against the things that this foundation is doing. Going to be a lot of fun. Me, Kevin, Robbie, Max, all the four of us who are on a bunch of these episodes, we're all going to be there in attendance playing golf. Uh, it's going to be really fun. Again, weather should be awesome that time of year in Nashville. And again, I'll remind you, Texas is at Vanderbilt right there in Nashville the next day on the Saturday if you want to make a whole weekend out of it. Friday, October 25th, the Music City Wheels Golf Classic. You do not want to miss it. Now, here's a big one. It's mid slate. We're doing it last of the mid-slate ones because this one technically kicks off at 4 instead of 3.30. And as I said, we go chronologically. Guys, this one is huge. Utah at Oklahoma State. Welcome to the Big 12, Utah. Another observation game. Is Cam Rising playing? The signs are pointing to yes. He may not be 100%. Is he going to have to wear a glove on his throwing hand or not? We really don't know. This line has bounced all over the place. As the time I made these banners, it was Oklahoma State minus two and a half. That's about where it started. Then it went about all the way up to Utah minus two and a half. Now it's all the way back. People don't know what to make of the Cam Rising situation. Oklahoma State's been very disappointing so far. They're still 3-0, though. Maybe they've been holding back. Maybe in this new 12-team playoff era, Gundy even knows, look, we lose that game to Arkansas, doesn't really matter. Our bread and butter with the playoff is going to be through winning the Big 12. This is probably the game of the year in the Big 12 regular season. I'd be willing to say the winner of this game probably has an 80-plus percent chance of making the Big 12 title game. This game is huge, guys. Got to make a pick. Thing is, I love both of these teams. I love both of these programs. I love both of these head coaches. They're ones that typically, in a given week, when they're not playing each other, obviously, I'm pulling for them. I respect them. I like them. They're just really good. Got to make a pick. I'm assuming Rising's playing 28-27 Utah Instant Classic. How about that? Sign me up. To the night slate we go, 7 o'clock, Cal at Florida State. No, I'm not doing that again. I'm kidding. How is Florida State still favored in all of these games? They're 0-3. They've been big favorites to kind of big favorites in all of them. They never show up. Sticking with DJ Uyanga Lale at quarterback is downright indefensible at this point for, for Florida State. Like I said last time, I, what, what are you doing, Norvell? The fans don't care if you eke out a bad bowl. Play the young kids. See what you got going. This season's over. You cannot accomplish anything you put your mind to to start this season. Play the young quarterback. Play all the young players. See what you got going into next year. That's far more important than trying to make the, 
I think even Independence Bowl would be being generous at this point. But as far as making a pick in this game, betting this game, wait until pregame, follow the Florida State beat writers on Twitter, and if their tackles are playing, I'm fine taking Florida State. If they're not, hammer cow. All right, so we have no way of knowing until then. So, I I mean, I can't pick Florida State to win. They haven't done it yet. 27-21 Cal. All right, here's the one you've all been waiting for. Tennessee at Oklahoma, 730 ABC. All the eyes will be on it. Straight up, we're going to do our picks after these games. I'm on both Tennessee and the under. Everyone loves Nico. Lost in that, for a lot of people, could be how good that running game is. And, guys, it's Kent State. They're terrible. They put up 71. They put up 65 in the first half on him. Not really throwing the ball hardly at all. They, Like I said last episode, they were one yard away from having three 100-yard rushers in that game. They can, they can beat you any which way. Pick your poison defending that offense. And even if they know about the Tennessee running game, a lot of people are still laid to the fact that Tennessee's defense is awesome. So, Oklahoma's been underwhelming. Tennessee hasn't been, to put it lightly. That's why I'm comfortable with the under. Now, Oklahoma's offensive line has been downright horrible. So, that... I mean, I just, I think Tennessee in the under, it feels too easy, which kind of scares me, but, and to just pour gasoline on the fire, Josh Heupel, Heisman Trophy runner up in 2000, playing for Oklahoma, Bob Stoops then fires him as an assistant coach. I mean, he wants to win this one more than he's ever wanted to win a game in his return there. Tennessee 31, Oklahoma 13. Baylor at Colorado. Colorado has much higher upside than Baylor with their top end talent. They got that hand, those handful of NFL guys. Baylor just doesn't. Baylor's been underwhelming across the board so far. Shador and Travis, those top end guys, I think they go off in this game. And it'll be one of those parties in Boulder type of nights. 34 20, Colorado. Last one. Late night. Little Big 12 after dark for you. Kansas State at BYU. Guys, I've mentioned it before. One of my longest, oldest principles I've had is always back BYU in big games in September. It seems like they always come through on them. Against this team, catching less than a full touchdown extra point, I can't quite do it. I expect this to be a grind of a game. Everybody's loving Kansas State after the big win over Arizona last week, going out to Provo. It's always a crazy home field advantage for BYU. Kansas State finds a way to escape because I think that's going to be what it is. It's going to be they really probably didn't have any business winning it, but just somehow, some way, that team with that culture just finds a way at the end of the game. They got more points than the other team. I've got a 24-20 Kansas State, but it's not going to be pretty. All right, on to the picks. Guys, I have a confession to make about these picks. You know they haven't been pretty so far. I'm, I hate to say it, you hate to even say the word out loud. I got the yips. I got the yips. Looking at the board all week, just couldn't pull the trigger on any of them. We've only got 10 plays this week, which maybe that's a strategy. Maybe I've just been doing too much. We've only got 10 this week. Smallest card I've had since like week seven of 2016. I think we all remember how that one went. Here we go. Getting started Friday night. We got Syracuse minus eight and a half. They're hosting Stanford. I think this line is way too small. Should be double digits. Should be two touchdowns. I think Syracuse wins and covers this one comfortably. Kansas plus two. We talked about it. West Virginia is just not any good. I think Kansas writes the ship. Gets it done outright. 
Charlotte, Indiana, over 49. Indiana has a chance to get there by themselves in this one. Charlotte's got a backup quarterback in. Been bad most of the season, but then last week sort of showed some signs of life. So instead of taking Indiana to cover the 29, I'm just taking over 49 for the game. I think Charlotte finds a way to punch it in once or twice. But again, Indiana could very well get to 49 points all by themselves in this one. Army, minus six and a half. They've been playing well. With that home field advantage, they'll win by at least a full touchdown. Arkansas Auburn. I said it was 34 28. That is comfortably over 56, which is what the pick is. USC Michigan under 44. I told you you'd see this game later in the pick segment. Remember my final score prediction 20 to 10. USC comfortably under 44. Tennessee minus seven and a half and the under 57. Tennessee minus seven and a half. Again, just the way things are going for us right now. Took that one early on in the week. It's moved back the other way. So should have waited, but I thought it was going to go uh, towards a higher number for Tennessee, but that's just not how it worked out. I think they'll cover it fairly easily. Again, I had 31-13 as final score. South Carolina, Akron under 44 and a half. Sellers probably isn't playing for South Carolina. Akron's probably not going to be able to score on South Carolina. They're comfortable getting out there with like a 31-3 to type of win, that sort of thing. Colorado minus two talked about it. They are playing against Baylor. I'm just not a believer in Baylor at all. And that's what I think about it. So that's the card. That's the big games this week. Remember, guys, hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe, and thanks for watching. See you next week.